So we're talking about using Excel VBA to create buttons for super fast data input. And let's get straight into the spreadsheet on this video. We're well progressed uh, through this task. Um, it's looking good. Uh, the main mechanism is there. It seems to be working well, but there's a few more things uh, to really get this to a good level. Uh, for example, I'd like some summary information at the top. I'd like to know immediately how many students are in the spreadsheet, how many students are here, how many students are not here. So that's one thing for us to do. I'd also like to have uh, a reset button in there. So rather than having to click all these buttons to set them all to not hit, I'd rather have a reset button there to do that at the click of a button. And then generally we can improve the formatting a little bit. So three things to look at in this video. But it's best to begin with the summary uh, information. And this is actually an example of some poor planning uh, in Excel because uh, I should really have gone through uh, the requirements in the beginning, identified that it, would, that it would be a good idea to have some summary information at the top, and then made some allowances for that because I need four or five rows uh, to provide this uh, summary information. But if I put additional rows in now, because of the way we've set up the code, and uh, we can see, yeah, this code to copy paste buttons. It's referencing, there's, there's kind of a hard reference here. It's referencing row four. So if we've got summary information in row four, the button is gonna go overlay the uh, summary information, what we have in the cell. So let's put the summary information in there and then let's try to tweak the code to get it all working. Uh, so I'm gonna have a couple more rows in here. So I've just hit shift and spacebar, shift and spacebar on a PC, and then control shift and plus. And that should be a good number of rows. So this 13 figure is telling us the total number of students in the spreadsheet. If we double click on the cell, we can see the count a formula is counting in this range, how many cells have data in counting how many students. So that's fine. So let's say 13 uh, students in class because that is what the data uh, is reporting to us. And then uh, we want here to say the number of students present and the number of students uh, not present. So I need a formula in cell B3 to tell me how many students uh, are here. How might we do that? Maybe stop the video, try it yourself if you want. What formula is gonna allow us to do that? Well, the count if formula will count the number of cells in a range that conform to a criteria that we can determine ourselves. In this case, we want to count the number of cells that have here in them and the number of cells that have not here uh, in them. So count if is gonna allow us to do that. I'm just gonna select the range using keyboard shortcuts, holding down the shift key and using the cursors. I'm gonna make that an absolute reference because we're gonna use the formula in the row below and I can just recycle the same formula if I put the absolute reference in now. And then the criteria here is going to be here. There we go. So that should do the job. Remember, you don't have to close the bracket. Uh, Excel will do that for you. So the count if is saying we've got nine students present. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that seems to make sense. If I put another student in, we can see the formula uh, changes. So that seems to be uh, doing the job. And then I'm gonna copy paste this formula down, control C, uh, control V will do the job. And then now you can see the value of putting an absolute reference in there because we've got the dollar signs, which I put in using the F4 key. Uh, that reference, the reference in this cell has not changed. Even though I've copy pasted the formula down one row, the reference is the same. That's because I fixed the references using the F4 key, the dollar signs are in there. That's now an absolute reference. So let's change this to uh, not here. There we go. And yeah, so the formula is saying one student uh, is not here. And yeah, that's true. Uh, because uh, now there's two students not here, and I can click here twice, and there'll be three students uh, not here. 
Okay, so we've got our summary information at the top, but we said at the beginning, that's going to pose a problem because we've made a structural change to the spreadsheet. We've put a row in, and when we do the button generation macro, which I'm going to run now, uh, well, let's just run the macro and let's see what happens. I'm just playing the macro now. Okay, and we, we can see the buttons not quite in the right place here. Okay, so I'm going to clear out the buttons again. Delete the buttons. Okay, we've got a single button at the top here. So we're going to have to just tweak the code slightly, the code, the copy-paste buttons code. And we need to find the line of code that is controlling the position of the buttons. So which line of code is that? Well, you remember from the beginning of the series, the dot left and the dot top commands. Uh, so we can change this. So it's currently cells four. So it's the fourth row down the spreadsheet. Let's have a look at the spreadsheet now. And it should now start on row seven. That seems to make sense. So I'll just change this to seven, change this number to seven two. And let's play the code. Yeah, that's almost done the job. Um, almost done the job. You can see I've gone one row too far there. So we can change this uh, to six. There we go, clear out the buttons again. Back to the top, run the copy paste buttons code. Should have the right amount of, there we go. Now we've got the right amount of buttons. Everything's lined up uh, really nicely. So this is what we wanted to get to, but there's a bit of a cautionary tale or certainly a lesson for you there, which is good planning. Uh, avoids problems later with the code. I was able to make those tweaks uh, quite quickly, but you might end up getting in a bit of a mess. So it's important to think at the beginning, what are the requirements for this spreadsheet? How do I want it to look? Do I want summary information? If I'd gone through that process properly, I would have identified that I need summary information at the top, and I would have begun uh, building the code with the assumption that it would begin on row six rather than, than on row four. So just a lesson there, try to plan your spreadsheets. It's gonna save uh, you getting into a tangle with the codes later on. Okay, so this is looking good. We've got some nice summary information uh, at the top now. And I think the final step we need to do is just to put a reset button, a reset button into the code and that means uh, say the class is done, we want to set up for the next class, we can just hit a reset button, it will set all of the students to not here, all of the students to not here, and that means that the, um, the class is ready, um, or the spreadsheet is ready for the next class. So how might we do that? Uh, well, let's think the steps that we want to do. We want to set all of these cells, the text in these cells. Uh, so that's cell D6 to D18. We want to set the text in those cells to not here. And then uh, these cells here, which are recording the arrival time. In fact, I'm going to write that in now. Arrival time. Uh, we want these cells to be cleared, yeah, because it wouldn't be any good uh, if we had the previous lessons, arrivals, arrival times, in the next lesson spreadsheet. So we need to clear out those cells too. Um, so let's get a new routine going here. I'm just gonna put it here. Uh, so as always, let's have a meaningful name for the routine. And let's just say uh, reset class, something like that. And then we want to clear out this range here. So we've got E6 to E20, E20 just outside of your screenshot, E6 to E20, E6 to E20. And then we've got two options clearing cells. Uh, clear is fine, clear would do the job, but clear is also gonna clear the cell formatting. And that's, that's not ideal for us because we just want the contents of the cells to be cleared. We'd actually like to retain the formatting. So we've got another command here, really useful. Uh, clear contents is going to clear what's in the cell without clearing the formatting of the cell. So that would seem to do the job. Uh, I'm just going to step into this F8 key. We've got E6 to E20, yep, seems to be right. Step through it and we can see these cells have been cleared, so that's good. And then secondly, we want the value in these cells, so D20 
6, the D20, to be set to not here, because that's the starting point for a new class. Uh, so let's get really lazy here. Uh, recycle previous line of code, and then D6 to D20. And then we can just say equals uh, not here. There we go, that should, should do the job. I mean, I said I was getting lazy there as if it was a bad thing, but laziness is actually a virtue for programming quite a lot of the time because it's better to recycle some old code and tweak it than to try to write the code uh, from scratch. So generally a good idea to recycle code as I just did that. Okay, so what happens now? Let's just run the macro. Okay, so this is good, not perfect, but it's good. I'm just going to change the justification here, Alt-H-A-C, to go for central justification there. Um, yeah, so it's almost there. It's almost there, but this, this is really annoying me. We've got two rows at the bottom uh, where there's no button, there's no student, but there's still a not here. Um, not here is in the cell there. So I want to make this as good as I can and improve the precision so that only the cells where a student is entered, only the rows where a student is entered, have not here uh, typed in there, okay? How are we gonna do that? Well, first we're gonna, let's clear all of the cells first. Yeah, let's clear all of the cells. So I can do that by saying, changing this reference to D6. Let's play that. Step into that rather, F8 key, stepping into the code. There we go. And then, yeah, this line of code here, we, we can improve this so that it will only put not here into rows where a student has been entered. That's what we're looking to do. So only up to row 18, we don't want row 19 and row 20 um, to have anything in at all. So how might we do that? Well, where in the spreadsheet have we got information about the number of students in the spreadsheet? We have that information in the spreadsheet, up at the top here, um, cell B2 has a formula in. So this is another great example of combining formulae, spreadsheet formulae and VBA code together. That's what we're going to do here. So let's reference B, uh, B2 and let's Let's delete this, and then I'm going to incorporate um, the value from B2 into this line of code. And there we go. I think I just need, there we go, I think some, some, something like that. Should...